Hello SRA Nation, this is Jerry Finkel and today I'm going to walk through a comprehensive tutorial of using Armor Paint to create a livery um, in ACC. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up Armor Paint. Um, I'm going to include a download link uh, for all the resources I use in this video in the description. So make sure you click on that uh, to get you started. So the first thing you're going to do, open up Armor Paint and you're going to be greeted with a little brick right here and you're going to come up here and you're going to go to file and you're going to go to down to import mesh and you're going to go to uh, your resources um, that you download here uh, ACC templates and then you're going to go to the car that you want to build uh, we'll go for the Aston Martin V8 GT3 double click that uh, you'll see an OBJ file you're going to double click that select import and now you have your mesh a couple of quick housekeeping things that you're going to want to do first before getting into it are first, you're going to want to come up to camera here at the top. You're going to change your view from perspective uh, down the drop menu to orthographic. This will help when placing decals to make sure they don't um, place in a weird way. I'll show you more on that a little bit later. The next thing you're going to do is come over here to the right and you're going to right click on your layer. And down here where it says res resolution, you're going to slide that bar up to 4K. Now it'll take a little bit to uh, register this. So usually I wait for about 10 seconds. Um, and then by that time, it's kind of done being frozen for a second and ready to go to work. Is We are going to uh, create two folders. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a couple extra paint layers here real quick. And then when I have one of these layers selected, I'm going to select layer one. I'm going to hit new. And I'm going to go down to group and then that's going to create a folder that includes right now layer one and I can add any other layers into that group by dragging and dropping right underneath where the folder is so now layer two and layer one are both in group four now I'm going to create another group so I'm going to select layer three because currently it's not in a group and I'm going to hit new and go down to group now uh, I'm going to rename both of these groups. The first one I'm going to rename to decals and the second group I'm going to rename to sponsors. This will separate our images that we put on the car into two different groups. When we export them and import them into ACC, it'll help us be able to put them on the car and we'll be able to change the material properties when we put them on the car and that'll help us out a little bit later, but more on that when we do the exporting part. All right, next up, I'm going to show you how to uh, import a texture mesh and use the UV uh, fill tool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the bottom left, right where it says browser, textures, messages, fonts, whatnot. And you're going to uh, click on textures and you're gonna hit import. And then you're going to go wherever you have the image of the texture that you wanna add as a base to your car. Um, we're going to go to right here, we're going to click on that. And then once you have it over in this area, then you're going to come over here to the right under materials, you're going to hit new and it will pop up like a new white looking circle. You're going to double click on that. It'll bring up this menu here that'll say RGB and material output. What you're going to do is you're going to hit R, uh, click on the RGB and you're going to delete that. And then you're going to come over here to the left again, where you just imported your texture. And you're going to drag that uh, right over here and a pop-up pop box should come up saying image texture. And then you're going to drag from this yellow dot that says color on the left over to the material output where it says base color. And then you're going to do alpha to opacity. Once you've done that, you can come over here to the right and you can double click to deselect uh, this new material that you have created. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to right click on this material and we're going to hit the fill layer. But the first thing I'm going to want it under the decals layer because the decals are going to go underneath the sponsors. And because I want the texture to go around the base of the car, that's why I'm going to put it under that. So I'm going to click on layer, let's do layer two. Yep. I'm going to right click on this material that I have made and I'm going to click to fill layer. And that will fill the entire car with the texture I've made. Now, right now it doesn't look very good. So we're gonna do a couple things to make it, uh, make it look better. Uh, we're going to right click on the layer that we've just made and we're gonna come down to UV scale and we're going to change the UV scale to 10, 
what this is going to do is it's going to make the image repeat a bunch of times over the mesh. It'll, it might freeze for a little bit, so just give it a little bit of time to do its thing. And now the image will repeat over the entire mesh. Depending on how you have the mesh line up, you might also want to come down here to uh, where it says UV map, triplanar project, when you right click on your, uh, your layer here. Um, sometimes triplanar and adjusting the angle will help the meshes fit in. Now for this one, it, it looks pretty good how it is, just because of how small it is and how similar. But you might want to play around with these buttons down here in the angle to make it look all uniform and line up correctly. Um, after you're done with that, if you just want the car to have a base like this, you can move on to the next step. Uh, but let's say you were like, well, I don't want my whole car to look like this. I only want certain areas um, to look like that. Um, one thing that you can do, left click on your layer to select it. And you can come up to new and you can go down to black mask. All right. And as you can see, it took off that, uh, that texture that we had, but now if we go over to materials and we, uh, double click on this and we create, a a black, sorry, black, not white, a black color. And we also have a white one. That's a default right here. Um, we can paint using the paint tool or uh, right here over the, the mesh, over the mask, and it will reveal parts of the, the texture that we have put on the car. Um, but we are not going to do it like that because it doesn't look very good because you can draw in large swaths like that. Uh, what we are going to do, oh, I just undoed one too much. Um, we are going to come to fill the tool over to the left, the little paint bucket. And near the top, you're going to see um, some sliders, UV scale, angle, opacity, mix, UV map, and object. Which you're going to come over here to the last one that says object, do the drop down button, and come down to UV island. What this will do is whenever you have a fill tool and you click on, let's say I want to fill the spoiler. Oh, I'm using the black right now. I need to switch to the white. I click on the spoiler, it will fill in that little piece of isolated uh, uh, mesh and you can do it at any part of the car so like the hood or the top or the side or whatnot um, you can make the mesh kind of stand out and if there's an area where you're like oh shoot I didn't mean to color that um, you can always go back select your black uh, marker when you have the mask selected and you can just paint back over it and it will delete it also usually I just use the control Z which is undo so you can undo any move that you've done previously. So we're just going to undo all of those. Um, and two, if you're trying to undo things and it only goes back a couple, you can actually uh, go down to edit and preferences and you can change the uh, amount of undos uh, that you have. So right here I have mine at like 46, something ridiculous. So I think it only starts out with two or three. So if you want to do like have it remember more so you can undo more um, you can just adjust the slider under the edit preferences and then you go down to usage and adjust this top slider right here uh, keep in mind too that if you're on selecting a normal layer like let's say i'm just on layer two uh, we're going to move that to the front just so i can be able to see any markings um, you can do this with any colors too um, you can hit a new material double click hit anywhere on the color wheel here let's go with pink because pink is cool and you can also use that to fill any part of the car that you want um, to paint. Usually it looks better when you use it on accents and not just like wide swaths of the car. But uh, depending on how you're creating your, uh, your livery, um, you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, to import a sponsor is the next thing we're going to show real quick. Um, so kind of like you imported this texture, you're going to import. And then you're going to come over here um, to wherever you have your image for the sponsor. Um, so we're going to go to where I made the my uh, Nissan here, and I'm going to select our SRA logo. And it's going to pop up right here next to our texture that we imported earlier. And since it's a sponsor, and I'm going to want it to show a different type of material as a different type of material, and I'm going to want it to show over the decals, I'm going to make sure I select a layer that's underneath my sponsors folder, and that will come more important uh, later. So I'm going to select uh, a new material. And I'm going to double click on that material, much like I did with the textures earlier. Delete the RGB box. 
and then I'm going to drag over the SRA logo I have just imported until it pops up as image texture here. And then I'm going to line up the color dot with the base color and alpha with opacity. And now I'm going to double click on the, the node I've just uh, created to make it go away. And now if I come over here to the left uh, on the fourth option down, it says stamp. Now I have an SRA stamp that I can put anywhere on the, on the car. Um, and usually what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to orientate it using the camera um, to line up left, top, right, like that. Um, usually just to make sure it's, it's directly on the perspective that you want it to. And uh, let's say I do want symmetry. Uh, on If you're looking on the, the left, right side of the car like this, you're going to want to hit Z symmetry. And what this will do will pretty much copy it to the other side. So now you see I've just right left clicked and it is stamped on the car. And if I look on the other side, it is also stamped on this car here, but it's, it's a mirror image. So the text is going to be a bit weird. Um, and if I wanted to do something like symmetry on the top, you're going to want to do X symmetry instead of Z symmetry. So let's say I want SRA logo on either side. Now it's copied it to the other side like this. So you can have it line up without having to guess where it is. Um, but with text, Images, it doesn't work as well. Usually with other decals and stuff like that, um, it works better. But with text decals, you're going to have to place by yourself. Um, and then keep in mind, too, up here at the, the top, you can increase the radius of a, a, a text box or whatever stamp you have um, by adjusting that slider. And keep in mind, too, it goes up to 2, but if you actually click on the number and type in, like, 5, you can, <laughs> you can go over the limit. Um, so that's something that's useful as well. And then over here it has like angle and whatnot if you want to angle it. Um, but you can also angle the camera as well using the numpad um, to try to rotate your view as well. Hey guys, Jerry from the future here doing something that past Jerry forgot. So a quick uh, tip real quick is that if you are going to erase something with the eraser tool over here on the left, make sure that you have a solid color selected, not a stamp. If you try to erase with a stamp, it won't work very well. So select a solid color, the eraser tool, and erase away. All right, next I'm going to show you how to uh, use uh, and make a gradient on your car. So what you're gonna do is you're going to either find a gradient online, or I have one already. Um, I think it is under my, this one right here. Yep, um, I'm gonna select my gradient and open it. You can also make a gradient in GIMP, and I can show you how to do that too in here just a little bit. Um, so you're going to want to come over here like you're adding an image, hit new, delete the RGB, drag your gradient over, and you're going to line up the color and the alpha. And then once you're done with that, you will have your stamp of the gradient. And usually what I do is I just kind of line the car up using your top. Um, and then I will just rotate. Let's say I want like a, a back to be black and then the front to be white. I will make sure, because it's going to be an undercolor, I want my uh, sponsors to show up over this. I'm going to make sure I'm in a layer that's uh, on the decals area, not the sponsors area. And I'm just going to adjust the radius of my square so it's bigger. Um, and if it's not big enough, like I said, you can also just go in here and type to go over the limit. So I'm going to wait until it's covering the entire car. And then I'm going to make sure I have X-Ray uh, clicked as well up here near the top next to symmetry. Um, that will make sure that the gradient will go through all surfaces and it will apply to the entire car. So once it's on the way you, like over the car, you're going to left click and it will apply the gradient to your car. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to create in GIMP. Uh, large swaths of color and designs and shapes and stuff to put on your car. Um, the way that I find the easiest. Um, so let's say I want to apply a, a col uh, something that goes down to the car and then across uh, near the bottom like that. Usually what I do is I go and I align to the left view using my camera. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Snipping Tool. Uh, there is a command for that. I forgot what it is. Um, okay, so it's Windows key, Shift S, and you will open up your snipping tool. And you can hit uh, regular rectangular snip like this. 
and I'm going to go over the car like such. And that is going to copy it to my clipboard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up GIMP or any other imaging editing program you have, like Paint.net, Photoshop, whatever you're using, all works. So we're going to wait for GIMP to boot up here. I'm going to create a new, and uh, depending on how your SNP is, um, your image size will differ. But you should be able to just uh, control V and it will post it uh, and, and match the the size of the image. Um, so you, then we have our image right here. And uh, before I start doing anything, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure our image is uh, image size is very large uh, because Armor Paint does not do very well with low quality images. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like uh, make sure that our width and height is locked with this little key right here. And I'm just going to change the width to like 2000 something fucking huge right so now i've increased this all right and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to come over to this little area in the bottom right i'm going to right click i'm going to add a new layer um, and i'm going to put it as the fill with this transparency so now we have a transparent layer over this <clears throat> what i'm going to do is let's say i wanted to like run through this little side and then like down uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab our free select tool i'm going to come up here above the car and kind of use the image to line up where i want it let's say i want it to come down like right to the bottom like that and then it's going to come across the bottom like so i'm going to move it actually up i'm going to have it not aligned with that i'm just going to move it like that and then i'm going to have it kind of be like a square. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit to kind of line up with the window. <clears throat> and then I'm going to, okay, now I have my selection right here, which is where my paint is gonna go. And now I'm gonna come up here to the fill tool. <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure I have my transparent layer uh, selected. <clears throat> And I am going to change the uh, fill mode to normal. And then whatever color I'm going to want, um, let's do like red. And then I'm going to come down here and uh, select fill whole selection. And I'm going to click inside the selection. <clears throat> All right. Now that I've done that, I'm going to make sure when I'm exporting the image that I don't have the other layer showing. So I'm going to hide the other layer. So I just have the part that I want to uh, export. And I'm going to come up here to file. I'm going to hit export as, and you can name it like red, <coughs> red stripe. And make sure you save it as a PNG. <coughs> All right, and then we're going to come over wherever we're going to save it. Uh, let's save it in library art. Sorry, livery art. Um, and we're going to hit export. Okay, and it's going to ask us a bunch of stuff. We don't have to change any of that. Hit export. <clears throat> All right, great. Now we're going to go back to Armor Paint, and we're going to go to Import, and we're going to go exactly where we saved our image there, Red Stripe. We're going to open that up. We're going to go to New. We're going to do the same steps for doing any other image that we've done. Color, Alpha. And then we're going to go to Stamp. We're going to increase the radius. Okay, so the radius isn't as big as I would like to. <clears throat> All right, this might be a little bit... Uh, we're going to see here how this lines up. So we're going to take the radius this. And you can also like use the zoom in to kind of perfect it here. Um, but I'm going to click, and then it will have that little side thing, that uh, mark here. And since I have the x-ray, it's going to go through the whole car. Um, usually I'll, I'll, I'll be able to do that on the side ones. Um, you can hit X-ray and I, I think you can get the same result too, if you have X or sorry, Z symmetry, um, on this as well. But you see that as also went to the other side of the car here. So then too, if I wanted to like, you know, add like another line or something like over here or something like that, I can click again 
and then maybe you can have like a different color in between those two so that's kind of how you add like large swaths of uh, uh lines and colors and and stuff like that there's going to be more your under layer of your uh of your car here uh, another thing to keep in track too whenever you're uh having images if i zoom in really close here you can see how there's a black line <laughs> along my image that's because whenever you import any thing into armor paint from a png it doesn't really do well good with edges um so you're going to want to import uh import all your images at a really high resolution this one i probably should have had a higher resolution and all you, all you need to do that is when i scaled that image of the snipping tool i'm just going to make it a larger image um, so that when i do that that custom uh, paint there, I have a larger image and then it will show up less of that, that black line. Another thing to keep in mind too is that if you ever have semi-transparent uh, things on your image where you have a, a, a transparency uh, back layer, but then you have colors on your image or whatnot that are semi-transparent, Armor Paint does not like that either. Um, so make sure your transparency is either fully transparent or not transparent at all, and that you're exporting your images from whatever program you're using them in to the very, very high resolution. Because then when they transfer over to Armor Paint, they will have uh, not very much of that black line on the side of the image. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to get an uh, image from the internet and convert it into an image that will be able to be used in Armor Paint. So let's say I'm going to look online for a star and I want to add a star onto my car and we can select any of these here. Some of them might already have a transparent background, but we're going to select one that doesn't already have a transparent background to kind of show you how to uh, convert one if uh, it isn't what you want it to be. So we're going to download this one right here. It's a JPEG, so it does not, it's not going to have a transparent background. So I'm going to open image in a new tab. And then save that image. I'm going to save it to my desktop. All right. And then I'm going to open that image up with GIMP or whatever other software you have. Now my star is in GIMP. Only thing you have to do is right click on the image. Come here to, uh, sorry, not right click on the image. Right click over here where you have your layers. And you're going to hit add alpha channel. This will add a channel behind the image that is transparent. And then you come over here to the fill bucket under mode, you're going to go to erase. And then usually what I do is I fill by similar colors over here, down by where it says threshold, that will pretty much, uh, determine the threshold that it will determine similar colors to fill. Now with white backgrounds like this, the threshold is so high that it's going to fill all of this stuff and you're not going to want that. So I'm going to hit the undo and I'm going to want to undo that threshold um actually hold on i have a wrong setting here um i have fill by red you want to fill by composite it should be default to composite but make sure it's at composite and when you hit fill it will erase the entire white and it'll be this little like checkered board background that's how you know it's transparent and you can actually zoom in on the side here and see that there's uh some like white stuff over here but you're going to want to make sure that there's no like semi-transparent uh edges just because in armor paint those don't do very well so i'm actually going to increase the threshold by a lot to kind of get rid of those oh okay now it's too high because i've gotten rid of part of the star so i'm going to keep adjusting that until i've cleaned up a lot of the edges like that but i haven't erased anything of the image i actually want so now once i have my image i'm going to export as and over here where it says rjpeg you're going to delete that whole thing rename it something that you'll find star and then you can just do dot png now when we export it it will export with that transparent background and when you put it into armor paint it won't have a background on it it'll just be the star i'm going to go to desktop i'm going to select the image that i've just imported and just like i've done the other ones i'm going to create a new node delete the rgb drag the star over deselect and now I have a star to put on my uh, car now that we have completed our livery in uh, armor paint we're now going to work on to uploading it in ACC so now that we were in ACC and we have booted up the car selector screen the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come over here 
uh, to like you're adding a new adding a new design. So you're gonna hit add, and we're gonna come over. We have created an AMR, so we're gonna create a new AMR over here. Um, you can put your car number, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just put mine here. You need your team name. Uh, test racing is our name, and then we're gonna hit save, and we're gonna hit back. All right, then once you're done with that, you're going to select documents. You're gonna to go to a set of course at Compute and before we mess with the live the delivery, we're gonna do one quick thing first. We're gonna to go to config, and we're gonna go down to menu settings. We're gonna open that up. And then if you could do control find, you need to type in text DDS. And once we have found this little section that says text DDS, by default, this should be a one. You're gonna to want to change this to a zero. What this is gonna do is allow you to edit your livery in real time and allow you not to generate a DDS file um, every time you do uh, adjustment. Um, this will kind of help with just making minor edits and all that kind of stuff. But uh, when you're editing your, your livery and doing edits and uh, putting in new skins and whatnot, you're going to want to change that to zero. And then once you're all done, you're going to want to change it back to one. Uh, because how of uh, Set of Corsa works with the files and whatnot, and to be able to upload your livery to Awesome Sin Racing, you will need the DDS files. But for right now, while you're editing, you're going to want to not have those DDS files. So change that to zero. And you're going to save, you hit X, and then you come back into the uh, Set of Corsa Compute folder, and now you're going to click on the Customs, and you're going to come over here to Cars. And if you look up here, you will see a JSON file that we just created by creating that new uh, new custom car in uh, ACC. So what we were going to do is we're going to open that file up, and we're going to do two things. The first thing is we're going to change skim template key to 98. What this will allow us to do is it will unlock the base carbon fiber car with no number plates. So if you want to have a car with none of the, the default sponsors or default number plates and create your own custom car, this is very important to change that number. Keep in mind, if you do do this, you will not be able to change the color of your wheels. So there is no functionality for that. Um, changing the color of your wheels if you do not have your uh, base number plate. So that is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. The next thing we're going to come down to is custom skin name. This is going to be the folder that your game is going to look for to know where to draw your skin from. So we're going to name this AMR underscore uh, armor paint tutorial. And now what you're going to do before you X out of that, you're going to want to copy that because it needs to be exact for a folder we're going to create in two seconds. So I'm going to hit copy, and I'm going to go down, and I'm going to hit save. Then we're going to X that out. We're going to go back into customs. <clears throat> now we're going to go down to the deliveries folder, double click on that. And now you're going to want to just out in the empty space here, hit right click, new folder. And the name of that folder, you're just going to paste whatever you put for that custom skin name in that other area. Now once we've done that, we can open up that folder here and we're going to head back into Armor Paint to show you how to uh, import your images. So now that we're back in Armor Paint, we're going to right click on the decals folder and we're going to hit export. Now we're going to do a couple things here. The first thing is we're going to go to where it says generic and we're going to select base color and then over where it says presets near the top, select that. <clears throat> and you're going to want to come over here to where it says A. And I think default, it should be something else. But once you change it once, I think it saves that forever. But you want to change that to opaque. Then once you're done with that, you can come back over to the export. And you're going to hit export. And now what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to the folder that you just created. So documents, set of Corsa, customs live liveries, AMR armor paint tutorial, and then you're going to name it decals. P and make sure it's saved as a PNG. And you hit save. It will freeze for a second. It will export the textures. 
Now I'm going to come up here to sponsors and do the same thing. It will already, if you've done it, change the settings and decals, it will already have it saved for you as uh, the export presets in this one as well. So you should be just all set to go and hit export. And they're going to be in the same folder. And uh, you're going to hit sponsors, type in sponsors, and you're hit save. All right, and now if we look back at our folder here, we are going to have these two images um, in our uh, folder here. Now what we're going to do is uh, go to the, one of the links I posted in my uh, tutorial description, and you're going to download a JSON file depending on what material you want each of these uh, layers to, to look like. All right, and now that I have them both named like that, we're going to rename all four of these files. Now, I said I wanted my decals to be the mat, so I'm going to name my mat folder to decals. And this is going to go below the sponsors folder. Uh, as far as where it shows up on the card, the decals always show up below the sponsors. But it doesn't matter where you have them inside the folder. And I'm going to name this to sponsors. And then I'm going to change my image names, and I'm just going to re remove that base that automatically comes with whenever you export it out of Armor Paint. So you should have two things that are named decals and two things that are named sponsors, two PNGs, two JSON files. Hey guys, Jerry from the future here, doing a little bit of something that Jerry from the past forgot. But one thing to keep in mind is during these using these JSON files, if you actually open them up, you can manually change the roughness, clear coat, clear coat roughness, and metallic properties of the material that you're using. Um, keep in mind that the values will be from 0 to 1, where 1 is the max and 0 is the lowest. So you can kind of play around with that value as well. Like, let's say I open this up and I want the clear coat to be more. I can change it to 0.5 instead of 0.3. But the presets like, uh, you know, uh, metallic or chrome or glossy will be there as well all right jerry from the future signing off take it away all right and then we're going to am advantage and we're going to go to test racing and it should show up our livery right here if it doesn't you might have to uh click on your edit and kind of like go in and then hit back and then uh don't save your changes just kind of like reboot like go in so sometimes it doesn't like to update so you might have to like go in go back out and whatnot but we should have our um livery now uploaded here you can see the gradient and the star and the stripes that we have added onto our car future jerry coming back in again just a real quick thing i wanted to show you guys as well if you do not want to do custom number plates you want um to be able to customize your wheels and you want the number plates that the game gets you you can just go in um to your edit and you can come down here to design and you can change that design to anything you want here and it will allow you to customize your wheel color and it will also have the number uh, as well that shows up. Um, keep in mind that there is no way to uh, have customizable wheels and not have the number plate. And then once you're done with your, li uh, your livery overall, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into that menu settings. I'll show you real quick again. You're going to go to your config, menu settings, control fine, you write text, text DDS, and then you're going to change that to a 1. I'm going to leave it at a 0 because I'm working on some stuff right now. But once you do it as a 1, you're going to want to reboot ACC, and then if you load right into a, a multiplayer match, it will load your DDS files. It's going to freeze for a little bit, and then you should have them to upload to your awesome sim racing uh, website client. All right, well, that's it, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, DM me, or I know Fazly is a god using armor paint. He has some awesome liveries as well. Um, so shoot me a DM. Um, I hope this tutorial kind of helped you guys. But uh, anyways, thank you, SRNA Nation, for watching, and I will uh, see you later. Take it easy.